Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Not yet. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome morning. to Good morning. Shepherd Bar Haven. This August the 22nd of the year of our Lord 2021. And we will commence today's service uh, with a land acknowledgement. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world of those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. O God, our Creator, we acknowledge the Algonquin people as the first stewards of this land. Help all who call this land home to honor their legacy and to work for the peace of their kingdom. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider. Help us, it is hard to believe, it is enough to share. We question your ways to believe from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of the eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have the first reading. lesson is taken from 1 Kings. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priests brought the Ark of the, of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or in earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant my father David that which you promised him, saying, There shall never there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and this plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there, that you may meet, heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel, 
when they pray toward this place, O oh, here in heaven your dwelling place, heed and forgive. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The song for this morning is Psalm number 84, and we will be reading it responsibly. responsibly. Uh, I'll read the first half. You can read the second half. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh in the living and the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my, my king, king and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will, they will always be praising, praising you. you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose, whose hearts, hearts are set, set on the pilgrim's way. way. Those who go through the de desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God. And look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand years in my own and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord, Lord withhold. For those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Let us pray. God of pilgrims, teach us to recognize your dwelling place in the love generosity and support of those with whom we share our journey and help us to worship you in our response to those who need our care for all the world is your temple and every human heart is a sign of your presence made known to us in jesus christ our lord amen, amen. amen. the second A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers, powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil, evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. 
He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at the Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus passed the twelve. Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. Amen. Uh, today I will offer some observations on the readings, which, uh, you know, as a former military officer, it talks about the armor of God. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's a fertile ground to comment on all kinds of interesting things. But the first is taken from the book of Kings, and it's a passage that records the dedication and consecration of the temple in Jerusalem to the service of God. This was a very auspicious occasion. And first, and probably foremost, is the, we note that there is the gathering of the elders and the heads of the tribes of Israel, and the leaders of the ancestral houses, all the assembly of Israel, the community of God, is assembled in this one place for this one significant event. And we'll move on about the community of believers, because I think this, we are looking at a prototype of a community of believers like ours. Second, the appearance of the presence and the glory of the Lord, in Hebrew known as the Shekinah, so powerful that the priests could not stand the light and the smoke that, that emanated from the Holy of Holies at that time as the Spirit of the Lord descended, overpowered the priests. God was demonstrating that he was entering this place of worship in his home and that his Spirit was present. And of course, the prayers of Solomon, praising the uniqueness of God and acknowledging that the temple could not hold him in his entirety. He also gives a supplication to the Lord for his mercy and a response to his prayers, that the temple be truly a place where God will listen to his people. Finally, and probably very radically in the Old Testament, at this early in the scriptures, he calls upon the Lord to accept the call of foreigners, or Gentiles, if they acknowledge the Lord's authority. Most unusual for that time. These verses foreshadow just what we are doing today. We are a community assembled in the service of God in this holy place. The Spirit of the Lord is present and acting among us as we pray and dedicate this time to Him. When we are assembled, the Spirit refreshes us and strengthens the bond of our religious community. We are also the fulfillment of Solomon's prayer. We are a community of believers who have been redeemed even though we are not of the original children of Abraham, through the sacrifice of Christ our Lord. When we are assembled, we stand in the presence of the Lord, in his temple, and surrounded by his love and healing power. Also, and this is parenthetical, just an addition, when we see the symbolism of the temple and we hear the recording of the temple, we also remember that it's not only the physical temple that existed, in Jerusalem at that time. It also talks about the temple that we are building within ourselves as we live holy and godly lives and we seek the word, we seek the company of other Christians. The second reading is significant because it was written by St. 
Paul to the Ephesians when he was in chains and awaiting an uncertain future. Uncertain to them at that time, but we know how that turned out. He speaks about the spiritual threats posed by the deceiver. He speaks about the rulers and authorities. And we are always familiar with the, old, with the King James Version, the principalities and powers that are active in the world that lead men astray and infect them with evil ideas and propel them to commit evil deeds. <laughs> the issue of the nature of evil is regularly debated. Even within the church, there are many who believe that the devil is a symbol or a metaphor for the existence of or for the evil that exists within the fallen heart of man. In the last century, we have seen movements that have mobilized millions to commit acts of aggression and then engage in class and ethnic warfare and commit atrocities in the name of both ideologies and religion. <clears throat> Whether or not you believe that there are good old fashioned demons like C.S. Lewis's screw tape driving the evil in the world, the evidence of misfortune and deliberate and willful acts of malice and wickedness are all around us. We currently live in a world where the goalposts are constantly shifting, and as our media, our biomedical and communications technologies speed up, not to mention the power of our intelligent machines, the picture becomes more and more incoherent. Where democracy and classical liberal values are in retreat, we are in a situation that has some similarities to the challenges faced by those Christians in, Eph in Ephesus 2,000 years ago. They faced uncertainty and the very real possibility of persecution in a hostile pagan world. And, you know, we all note that St. Paul was in Rome in chains at that point. And also we remember that at this time that the letter was being written, a rebellion was brewing in Judea that would result in that country being laid waste the Christian church in Jerusalem being wiped out, the Jewish temple destroyed, and there would be an aftermath of violence and warfare in Judea that would burn on for another 60 years. It was very appropriate for Paul to give strong advice that we find in this passage, and I think we can find application for it in our own day. He tells us we must fashion the belt of truth. In this context, the truth that we must seek is knowledge of the gospel, and the moral law that is contained in the Word of God. Many secular doctrines deny that the objective truth exists at all. Reality is a struggle between different classes and groups for political and economic power. We must seek biblical truths that map the way to salvation and the justice of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. It is worthy to note that the breastplate protects our hearts and vitals from attack. In those far off days, a breastplate could be the plate armor worn by the leaders of armies, or could be the steel straps of the Roman infantry, infantrymen's torso protection. Archers and cavalry similarly would wear chain mail or scale armor. Paul is telling us that by putting on the symbolic breastplate, we must lead righteous, or more precisely, moral and upright lives to the best of our abilities, in accordance with the moral law found in Scripture to live in harmony with the divine will, to dwell in peace with our fellow citizens and to demonstrate our faith to the outside world. We should also remember that Paul was a trained and educated Pharisee. You know, he, he witnesses himself that he trained at the feet of Gamaliel. He and his followers would know that breastplates were also worn by the high priests of the temple of the Lord. They were sometimes called the breastplate of judgment. And of course they had they were encrusted with special stones, the Urim and Thummim, that were used to proclaim judgments on certain things. In this regard, we are also reminded that as Christians, we are called to the holy priesthood of the saints. Further, Paul tells us to put on whatever shoes that will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. We can take the examples of the army of that day. The shoes, or keligai, as the Romans called them, could be quite different for those soldiers who were in the hot and dusty regions of Judea and Syria, and those who were stationed on Hadrian's Wall in northern Britain with rain, lusty cold, and winter winds, not to mention the ticks. But you can rest assured that they were very sturdily made with thick soles and hobnails for traction and durability. 
Paul is telling us that the journey of faith is a long one. Just as the armies of the day could cover great distances on foot, on long campaigns, we must be prepared for the long march of faith on the rough trails and misfortunes of life. The life of faith is challenging. We are not exempt from the rough spots. We must place our faith in God and the assurance of a salvation. We must also find our sure footing in the scriptures that will enable us to communicate the gospel both by our words and actions. Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now this is really significant symbolism. Because a shield not refers not only to our personal protection from the, the arrows of life, but it also refers or alludes to the importance to our religious community, the whole team. The Roman shields of Paul's times were large, rectangular ones, which covered the whole body. That wide, about that high. You lifted it up, you were, your body was protected uh, from, from the attacks of the enemy. The key thing here is, is the wall, or the shields were used in a wall. It wasn't just for your protection, it was for the protection of all. It was the whole team that provided the combined protection of the shields. The shield wall to the front provided protection, but there were also the ranks behind. And in many cases, depending on the size of your legion, it could be quite deep. And they would provide overhead protection from the hail of arrows running down from the enemy by holding their shield over the heads of the front rank. So you'd have the front rank standing up, side by side, a solid wall of protection. The ranks behind were all hold their shields up. They would hold them over the heads of those in the lead ranks. And behind them, they would put their shields up to protect against arrows. Those on the sides would enclose it, close that shield wall. And of course, it would make it look like a, a giant box of shields. The Romans called it the testudo, which, which, which is the word, their word for turtle or tortoise. In combat with a large shield, you also defended the soldier to your right. Because when you're in a shield wall, you don't attack the person to your front because you're standing there with your shield. You can't act. It's very awkward. Don't do it. You are protecting the person to your side. The person attacking him is the person who is exposed. You use your, you use your shield to protect the person, protect to the front, and you're attacking the person to your right. You're protecting the man to your right. You would attack the person attacking your comrade. Your comrade to the left would attack the assailant to your front. You each depended on the fighters to your left and your right for your survival. Further on command, those behind you, did they lull in a battle or at a critical moment, would step forward and use their shields to protect you and relieve you when you were exhausted. The shield represents the whole community found within the church walls. We must cooperate and reinforce each other in our Christian faith and service. The exercise and the building up of faith is both an individual and team effort. Through regular church attendance, participation in the ministries of the parish, and joining the fellowship of your faithful friends and protecting each other, from the assaults of the world, both material and spiritual. Paul tells us to take the helmet of salvation. Helmets are meant to protect our heads, which contain our mind. The seat of reason, as well as the organs of sight, smell, and taste. The helmet provides vital protection to attacks that will rob us of our consciousness and our ability to make sense of our situation. Paul is telling us to protect our ability to truthfully see the world through the lens of salvation. Salvation is the central message of the gospel, that we have been absolved of our transgressions, and the bond between each of us and God has been restored and maintained. It is also an assurance that regardless of our present troubles, we are joined to God and will inherit his eternal kingdom. Finally, we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the sword of God, as you know, the sword is both useful and defense. 
and also carrying the fight towards the enemy. In our tradition, in the Anglican tradition coming out of the Reformation, the Word of God is found in the Holy Scriptures, which are God-breathed. And of course, this refers to the letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verses 13 to 16. The scriptures are to be used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word is one, the one means that the Holy Spirit uses to enable us to lead full Christian lives, to discern the truth and battle the lies and deception of the world. We use the word in the offense in spreading the good news, as well as the defense, where you know, it's usually in Christian apologetics, which is the defense of the faith against the critics of Christianity. Paul is also urging us to regularly read and study the word thus so that we will be strengthened in our faith. He closes by exhorting us to pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. He tells us to stay alert and persevere in supplication for all the saints. We are reminded that we must find time for prayer and groups, our prayer in groups, and also in our private devotions. Some small observations on the gospel passage. In this passage, God Jesus gives us the good news, the gospel. He promises that those believers who follow him and partake in the sacraments will be saved. This teaching is very difficult because Jesus is clearly identifying himself as the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus makes it clear that the only way to salvation is granted by the Father through him. Many who surround Jesus leave, unable to accept that this man that they have traveled with is the Son of God. The significant point here is that these disciples and followers have surely seen Jesus perform miracles and demonstrate his profound knowledge in script of scripture and tradition, and still they turned away. They, couldn't, they could not accept that Jesus, who, was he, who he was, you know, who he said he was. In our day, there are many who say that they would believe if they saw a clear signs from God. Uh, an empty argument, it, it's an empty argument because people didn't believe the gospel message. Jesus was physically present, performing miracles before their very eyes. Jesus said in this passage, no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. This alludes to the true nature of Christian faith, is that it is not enough to take part in the rituals and practices of the church, but to believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We must partake in the sacraments and study the word and seek the fruits of the Spirit. Christianity is not the physical and intellectual exercise that we can set aside when it is convenient. It is also a spiritual relationship with the Almighty that requires the constant study of the Word and prayer. Just some closing ideas. Throughout all of this, there is a, there is a thread referring to the Christian community, the community of faith. The company of believers at the dedication of the temple. The church at Ephesus receiving advice from St. Paul, the company of disciples who stick with Jesus when challenges arise. We are here today in our house of worship, in the presence of God, protected by his spirit. We are a community of faith. As a community of faith, we are facing new challenges as we move to our new location. We must think and act as a community. There are numerous tasks that must be done to achieve the move, and we must support and assist the efforts of our pastor the board and those individuals who have been given responsibilities to make our move into our new place of worship and our new offices. Please make plans to attend church in our new location and to carry on the work of this church in the community. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now we have the song, All Creatures of Our God and King.
And we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the Right Reverend Michael Hawkins, Bishop, the Right Reverend Adam Halkett, Suffragan Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Saskatchewan. In the Lutheran Church of Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Southwest Area of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. We pray for St. Bartholomew's Ottawa and the Reverend Canon David Clooney. We pray for the new school year for students of all ages and for their teachers and parents. We also continue prayers for our family and the people with whom we live and work. Today we pray for Anthony, Andrea, Virginia, Carol and Hort. We ask you to bless them, Father, in the week ahead. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. We pray especially at this time for Afghanistan, for decisions both by the Taliban and by the Western world. May it make life easier and not harder for the everyday person. Lord, hear our prayer. Yeah. Let us pray for this country, especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. We ask you, Lord, to guide and direct the election at this time, that you would look after the people, help them to open their minds, to hear your voice through all the noise, and to make wise decisions. The Lord help them serve his people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. Lord, guide their growth and development. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. We pray especially at this time for Hope and Peter, Heather, Jennifer, Shannon, Tom and family, Kaylee, John and Christine, Dorothy, Chrissy, Jacob, Krista, Peter and Michael, Norma R, Connie, Henry, Sandra, Annette, Rosemary, Anita, Inez, Sheila, Andrea, Robbie, Andrea K, Margaret, Lisbeth, Doreen Akers, Kareen, Valerie, Maxine, <clears throat> Manny and Natalie, Terry, Eric, Adriana, May, Tom, Angela and Trent, Jason Robertson, please add those on your heart, either aloud or silently. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all those who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same service and sacrifice. And a prayer of thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world and the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for loving care, which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. <clears throat> Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the closing song on Eagle's Wings.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Just a quick review of the announcements. Next Sunday, 29th, will be our final Sunday in the mall. And we'll be having a service of Holy Eucharist and spiritual communion with prayers of thanksgiving. Yeah. If you have anecdotes or stories that are, are can be published or mentioned in the public, please email Margo and give her ammunition. <laughs> to attend the final service in the mall, see the Word Parish website or give Paula a call, a call at 613-823-8118. And again, we worship in the sanctuary of Bar Haven United Church Sundays beginning at 1.30 p.m. in September. Morning prayer will recommence on the 7th of September at Pesco Compline. Any questions or comments before we close officially? Yeah, I do. Okay. I brought vegetables from homegrown vegetables, uh, less usual, and um, donations will go towards a well in Cambodia. So uh, you don't have to give a big donation, just what you would have to pay at the grocery store. I'm very happy for anything. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a Should we one. sing happy birthday to yeah. Margo? Yes. Yes, okay. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday.